is they hear a voice and it says, come up hither. Now here's a clue. We're looking for a clue. We're looking for the last trumpet. Because these, the, first, the first resurrection and the rapture are supposed to take place at the last trumpet. How many trumpets are in the Revelation? Seven. 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 Are we close to the seventh? Chapter 10. It says that this angel stands, and in the days that the seventh angel begins to sound. I love that phrase. Seven thunders? Not the thunders. The thunders are sealed up. Okay, but keep reading down to about uh, 7. This is Revelation 10, verse 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God shall be finished. That's a clue. And that's pretty... I mean, I don't need a master's degree to get that. <laughs> and then it says... Um, the mystery of God shall be finished as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. All right then. The Apostle Paul, remember, was on the backside of the desert for three years. Remember that? And, and, the, and the Lord, by the Holy Spirit, revealed much to him. And he, he said that. He said, I didn't go over to Peter and to Paul. And, I mean, I didn't go over to Peter and John and all the other disciples. And, and just, I'm not just repeating what they want me to say. I went and studied the scriptures as a Pharisee. He went and studied the Torah. And the Holy Spirit revealed to Paul what he teaches. Hmm. And he talked about a mystery. And that, that is in Revelation. Uh, not Revelation. That's in 1 Corinthians 15, <clears throat> verse 52. This great mystery. And we see it here that the mystery of God will be finished. Okay, so it's at the last trumpet. The two witnesses were dead. And all of a sudden they're alive. And then they hear a great voice from heaven saying, come up hither. And I think that not only the dead in Christ will hear that phrase, come up hither, but those of us who are not dead and we are in Christ living at that moment will hear that same voice. Come up hither. And the dead in Christ, Paul says, will join with, I mean, the, those who are living at the moment in Christ will be caught up together with the dead in Christ and will be raised. Oh, man, what a rush. All right? And it says, and they ascended, they ascended up into heaven in the clouds, and their enemies beheld them. Wow. Now, keep reading because it's going to, it's going to um, confirm, at least in my heart, it confirms that this is the first resurrection and the rapture, not chapter 4. All right? Because something takes place, not on earth, but in heaven. And the same hour was there a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell and, and the earthquake, uh, in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000 and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to God in heaven. All right, so they were, you know, the remnant. Who's the remnant? The remnant are the 144,000 that are sealed back in chapter 7 and they don't go anywhere. <laughs> they stay here. I'll tell you what, they're all excited and they're having a party because this confirms that their king is about ready to show up. Now they have to wait a little bit longer and they're sealed and they're protected through all the stuff that's going to take place. All right? Verse 14. The second woe is past and behold, the third woe comes quickly. And the seventh angel sounded. And there were great voices in heaven saying, the king, oh, this is great. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ or of his anointed one. And he shall reign forever and ever. That's Jesus. 
And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to... Th I love reading this. So you're going to hear the whole thing. Okay? Uh, thou hast taken to thee thy great power, and hast reigned, and the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead. Ding! There you go. That's the clue. There's only two times of the dead. Now, yeah, there's Lazarus who was kind of <clears throat> out of sync. He died and Jesus brought him back to life. Jesus rose from the dead and the Bible says, and other graves were opened. And those people came back from the dead and went back into the city, into Jerusalem. Obviously, to tell the story. I think there, okay, I'm on a different shoot here, but just... We're dealing with the phrase, the time of the dead, all right? Those people whose other graves were opened, what story did they tell? We don't know what graves were opened. We don't know how long they'd been dead. Jerusalem has been around for a long time. Uh, the mountain has been known to the people of Israel for a long time. In fact, Abraham laid Isaac on the altar that was on the mountain that we know now as Jerusalem. Oh, we go way back. There could have been people that were raised from the dead. Oh my. Way back. Obviously, it's before Christ. Their story is the same. Their story, when they tell their story to their families or whoever they could find. Maybe their family would, I don't know, still alive or had moved or whatever. They start telling their story. Their spirits and their soul was in Abraham's bosom. Luke 16, read about Luke 16. Their spirits and their souls were there. And Jesus appeared to them. Because he came from hell. Because he took hell. He took our sins. The sins of the world. He took it to hell. And left our sins there. And went across that great chasm. Called. Well whatever it is. <laughs> anyway it's a great chasm. Between Hades. And Abraham's bosom. And he shows up in Abraham's bosom. And he preaches to those people. Basically it is finished. You don't have to stay here anymore. And he led captivity captive. Remember that verse? He leads them to heaven. Now, Paul says in, in, in Romans uh, 15, Paul says that when we are absent from our bodies, that's our soul and our spirit, are absent from our bodies, we are present with the Lord. We can go straight to heaven. We don't have to do this detour, which is known as Abraham's bosom, until Christ finished it on the cross. That's the story those people told, and for some reason, God allowed them to make the do tour. Okay? I don't know if they died again or not. I don't know. That, add that to your first top ten questions you're going to ask Jesus when you get to heaven. Okay, so it says... And thy wrath has come and the time of the dead. So John chapter 5 tells us there's two times of the dead. The first resurrection is, is for the, uh, a resurrection unto, unto life. And the second resurrection is a resurrection unto damnation. That's what Jesus said. So this has got to be one of those two times. Okay? So we'll look for the clue. And the time of the dead, that they should be judged, all right? And that thou shouldest give reward. Oh, that's positive. Nope. That, uh, give reward unto thy servants, the prophets. Now, I would say the prophets are in Christ. Would you agree? Then it says, and, and to the saints. I would say the saints are in Christ. Because we're looking for the dead in Christ. We're looking for the time of the dead in Christ. So he's got the prophets here, he's got the saints here, 
and, uh, and, and them that fear God's name, that fear thy name, those are obviously in Christ, and uh, both small and great. And he tags on this at the end of the sentence, and shouldest destroy them that destroy the earth. <laughs> there you go, Robert. The day of the wicked shall come, and they will get their due. <laughs> Psalm 37. And then it says, And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. Okay. Uh, I get the lightnings. I get the voices. I get the thunderings. Meridian celebrated dairy days. And they will celebrate tomorrow. But last night was the big deal. If you went over to the um, speedway and they shut off all the fireworks. I think those words are like, you know, a celebration and fireworks in heaven. <laughs> Makes sense to me. And, you know, it's, it's about, a, uh, about a half hour or maybe an hour. And it says in there somewhere how long it takes for all that ceremony to take place. So I find all my clues. I find the last trumpet. I find the time of the dead in Christ, the two witnesses, if they're going to witness everything, that means that they have a time appointed unto them to die. So they've lived in heaven all these millenniums, and their time, to be, their, their time of death is appointed unto them. They know that. They come back for three and a half years. They minister and their ministry looks like Moses and Elijah. They can, at a word, shut up the heavens and there's no rain. At a word, rivers turn to blood. This, this ring a bell anywhere with current events? <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking for the two witnesses. I would like to see them on the face of the earth. I don't know if... I, I don't know if the world sees them. I think they do. They because have power, they have power to, to Because it says the nations the nations the fear them and they hate them. How do you hate somebody that's not really there? How do you hate somebody that, you know, is like elusive, like a ghost? Apparently somewhere in their three and a half year period of time of ministering on the face of the earth, people on the earth be begin to know who they are. Okay? That's obvious as you read as you read uh, chapter 11. At least it, that's, that's the way I, I think it through. And the, and the nations of the world hate them, and they kill them. All right? Well, that's only because God has allowed it, and God has, you know, appointed a time for them to die. Okay. Okay. He says they try to kill them, yeah. and they can't yeah. before this. Yeah. Yes. The point. Yeah. So but eventually they overcome them, yeah. and they lay dead in the streets three and a half days. I thought that was interesting. So sooner so, or later, someone's going to know who they are and want to kill them at least. I look at California. I look at California in, in the news, and in my heart, I wonder if one of the two witnesses is over there. <laughs> Raised his hand over parts of California and just, oh, no rain. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, so I got the seventh trumpet here. I got the time of the dead. They are the good. So it's the first resurrection. Prophets, the saints, and so forth. So it's the first resurrection. And they die and are raised. And, and, and they ascend. I think that that is... That is uh, the first resurrection and the rapture, and then there's this great celebration in heaven. Oh man, I was so fired up when I read that, and I had read the Revelation, I taught prophecy for 23 years. And when I came to this portion of scripture, I had to make I had to make all kinds of adjustments because the pieces didn't want to fit. 
and I was with my with my <coughs> little hammer going, <coughs> trying to put my little puzzle piece in so it would fit. Is that the marriage supper of the lamb? Is that what? Is that? I mean, or is that later? Later? I don't think so. I think the marriage supper of the lamb comes after the great white throne judgment. Everybody's up there. But yes. Uh, but will, yes, I think so too. What yes. will take place here? is called the Bema Seat of Christ. That is where the Christians are now gathered before Jesus, and Jesus gives us our just reward. We don't go to hell. You can't go to hell from there. Why? Because he's looking at you through the blood of Jesus Christ. Are we perfect? No. <laughs> but he's looking at us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Is that perfection? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so on Christ's merits, and because of our confession of faith in Christ, we're, we're allowed to stay there. And so he gives us our just reward. Now, you're wondering where in the world is that talked about. You go back to, oh boy, I got to, do my memory, yeah. First Corinthians chapter 3. It talks about the Bema seat of Christ. The judgment, that's Bema, the judgment seat of Christ. So, First Corinthians chapter 3, I believe is going to take place, whoa, maybe it's part of this celebration. I never thought of that before. Well, so look at uh, verse 11 of the third chapter of First Corinthians. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And when my mom wanted to scare the wadden out of me, you know, about being a good boy, she would read this. I'm serious. <laughs> and, and she would, okay, uh, the, day, the day of judgment, the day of uh, being judged before Christ will declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work what, of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. The famous verse mothers use to scare the hell out of their children. No. Well, she would give me a hug afterwards, and, and she would comfort me, <laughs> and I would know that I'm never going to go to hell. But, because I knew Jesus as my Savior, but she wanted me to build on the foundation of Christ things of eternal value, okay? Things that would go through the fire and still be there afterwards. Oh, my. What's the one, I've, I've said this many, many times, so uh, what's the one thing that you can take to heaven with you? Other people. Other people. That's what you want to do. When you get called, when your name is called up and you and you come forward and and Jesus says, anyone that has come to know me through this person, come forward. Yeah. I hope I hope that you see people on your right and left about as far as you can see. You can't load your rider truck up with your personal goods and take them with you. <laughs> no answer. <laughs> All right then. So I think that's where the revelation, I mean, the first resurrection and the rapture take place. And that, that's where a lot of people are wondering, in God's timetable, where is all this going to happen? And that was the reason they asked Jesus the question, and his answer is a long answer, and that's Matthew 24. If you're in Mark, it happens to be Mark 13. If you're in Luke, it happens to be Luke 21. That's his answer. Okay? The next question people want to find out is where in my timetable 
is all this going to take place? In other words, is, it going to, is any of this going to take place in my lifetime? And if it is, then where in my lifetime might it take place? Well, I had a, I had a uh, question I could not answer. And thus, this diagram looks different than one that I have preached for 23 years. You'll notice where the line goes up, that's the beginning of the seven years. And on the line, at the corner, it says Gog, and Gog of Magog. Magog is a region, Gog is a man. Gog of Magog. All right, so then the seven years take place. And the question was, do all the seven seals open during the seven years of tribulation? To be continued. <laughs> Don't you love it? I can, just, I can just stop in a series. I can do that. <laughs> Not if you don't want a tomato. <laughs> so obviously, obviously you can see that, no, I came to the conclusion that there are four of the seals that were given a color code for a reason, and I'll develop that next week, and I'll share with you why I believe that not all seven need to be opened during the seven years. So when this seven years of tribulation starts, it's possible you only, you only have left five, six, and seven. Whoa, that kind of changes perspective, <laughs> possibly. And I know I'm leaving you with a thousand questions because right now you're, you know, you, well, well, what about, yeah, but, you know, and all these different things come up. But um, it's already seven minutes after six. So you want to just end now? and Or do you want a, two questions? <laughs> want me to hear two questions, and I'll go for... Ten minutes on those two questions. Yes. Yes what? Keep yeah, and, and now we're out of here now. Two questions? All right, because I see questions all over. All right, so Merlin. The first resurrection for the righteous, is that parallel to where we meet Jesus in the air? Yes. Okay. I thought he, was... he has not returned yet. Okay. Thank see? You. And now, man. So you're going to see... Oh, the pure wrath of God. You are going to see that from up above. You're going to be with Jesus and his angels and all that. I don't know. Maybe not. It, it might be your choice to watch those banksters get what they got due coming to them. You know? <laughs> or you might just say, hey, angel, you know, it's, it's your your." your guardian angel, and you go, is there really anything on Mars? I've been seeing this face. <laughs> and the angel will go, hang with me. <laughs> and you're there. And, you know, you, you might go investigating. You might go scout out whatever. Because at the return of the Lord is this mysterious thing that takes place, and God calls the saints from the four corners So we must have been all over the place. I mean, possibility. Okay, uh, another question. Any other? All right, David. Okay. <clears throat> Is the revelation chronological in its makeup, do you think? I do now. Because I, my question is regarding Revelation 7, 14. And I said unto him, Thou sirs know us. And he said, These are they which came out of the great tribulation and washed their robes, made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And that's before the seven trumpets. Revelation 7, mm -hmm. 14. And, 14. Yeah. and the, the 144,000 are sealed. And um, verse 14. So, um, 
Look for the verse that's, that says where they are. Um, and all the angels... They're before the throne of God. They're before the throne of God. With 14, as it came out of the Great Tribulation. Aren't okay. they the ones that were also under the altar saying, How long, O Lord? I think it is. How long? Where is the phrase? I'm looking for the phrase, How long, O Lord, holy and true, do we have to wait for our blood to be avenged? That's in there somewhere. Um, That's the fifth. <laughs> 610. And the only way I know how to answer that is um, people have been martyred for Christ throughout every century all the way back. Are those people who are martyred, see this diagram all the way back to the beginning, are those people who are martyred for Christ part of those listed in here and I would say it is um, I obviously don't have all the answers um, for this great subject um, but I would I would say for the most part I see the revelation chronologically chapter 12 is another mysterious chapter Right after the first resurrection and the rapture, if that's in verse, if that's in chapter eleven, then chapter twelve is also another mysterious chapter. Uh, some see it as the birth of Christ, so that would not be chronologically. I see it as a war that takes place between holy angels and the devil and the unholy angels over those that are being raised. And in the heavenlies, there's a great war to hold us back, to keep us from, from ascending up. Anyway, that's different ways that you can look at chapter 12. So, David, I didn't really answer your question because I'm not sure I can. Um, the souls that are under, the, the souls that say, how long, O Lord, must we wait? Those are obviously their spirits and soul with the Lord because their bodies are dead back here on earth. That's the fifth seal, right? Okay. Uh, this part is after the sixth before the seventh trumpet. Well, you're right. So in chapter six, in chapter six, you've already got these people being slain. That's where it is. Yeah. In chapter 6, you've got these people, the fifth seal, and, and they're slain. And uh, so maybe chapter 7 is referring to those. And, and so obviously, the fifth seal is during, this, during the tribulation. <clears throat> I believe 5, 6, and 7 of those seals, the fifth, sixth, and seventh seals are open during the seven years of tribulation. So that that answer of the angel would be, a, would be correct. These are those who were slain during the Great Tribulation. If it's, if it's those, I'm sorry, John, if it was those that were killed for their testimony during the fifth seal. And we've certainly been seeing that. I believe ISIS is, is all over that with people being beheaded. You see the word beheaded in the Revelation and you read that and you go, what? Why is a beheading going to still be in our future when we are civilized beings, civilized countries and so forth? How in the world is it just a King James word or is it a literal word? Well, I think that we're seeing that it is a revived, it's a literal word and it's a, a revival of an old 7th century whatever. Kill Apparently there are those that are not civilized. <laughs> yeah, it didn't keep up. <laughs> yes, John, three questions. No, I'm saying. <laughs> Just a real simple, basic question. I thought I kind of knew the answer, but now I'm getting a little confused. Is there a difference, and what is the difference between the tribulation and the great tribulation versus the wrath of God? I used to think that the great tribulation 
was the pure wrath of God. Okay. And that the tribulation was kind of the whole was thing. when mercy was still mixed with wrath. But when but when uh, the mercy is withheld, and we see that verse <coughs> that says um, that it is poured out Amen. without mixture. Right. Where is that? Uh, if I had my little Bible, I would know right where it is. I'm trying to get used to this big one. Um, so, things are getting pretty exciting. And nobody's asked, to, nobody's put me on the spot yet. <laughs> I thought, what? I gave you two questions. I thought for sure one of those two was going to be what's on my mind. Yes. I got a simple one for you then. We're the second, second Saturday in the Revelation. And I have not heard you mention Daniel once. Oh, I will. Okay, thank you. This can easily go like 27 hours. I usually do a seminar. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I usually do a seminar. This is only like a half but an hour. I'm most sure. of the people here, most of the people here have heard this like the fourth time and they're trying to really stay awake. But, you know, for the new people, I've decided to retreat this, go back into it uh, because of what I'm suggesting. And if, if you know what I'm about, you, you probably feel this coming. <laughs> I'm suggesting that we're in the tribulation. Now, mm -hmm. there are others that feel the same. I am suggesting, and I'm not preaching that yet, but I am suggesting. Because so much looks like it's being fulfilled. That part of the revelation. Now, where we are in that, I'm not sure. I can't give you a day when it started, but oh, whoa. We are, we are seeing some things, yeah. yes. One thing I find particularly interesting that Jesus said in relation to what you're talking about with these beheadings is that Jesus said that in the last day that they will, they will think they're serving God, they will murder you thinking they're serving God. Mm. Yeah. There's, there's, yeah. there's something special about beheading. And it's not the first time it comes up in Revelation. The most recent thing that I've read on it is Homeland Security has purchased, I think it was 1,500 guillotines. 1,500 what? Guillotines. Oh, guillotines. Yeah. And then you, know, you, you look at that and you go, what is this all about? You know, but I've seen the pictures, I've seen the train cars, I've seen the, the things, and and you, you know how this, how this can um, fit technology and fit science, modern day science. It just goes together like that. And that is when you have somebody in capital punishment and, and they are they are injected with a poison that kills them, right? Well that ruins that ruins everything. If it's firing squad, that ruins everything. If it's uh well whatever kind of capital punishment we got going on, pretty much ruins the whole body. But what significance is that? But a guillotine? Mm. When you quickly <laughs> sever the head, put the body on ice immediately, you could harvest all the organs you could harvest if they're good. Of course. <laughs> and you know, other countries, uh, uh, someone named a country that's already doing this. China, China. They're telling you to take your organs. Yes. For what? You've got For thousands of dollars worth of organs in your body. Yeah. <laughs> Why waste it all? I mean, these people. Oh my goodness! It reminds me of World War II Nazism and the science that was being practiced and studied back then. It's crazy. I mean, but I think that's where it's going. Not because of ISIS. Not because of. Islam and the spread of that and everything. I think that someone thought, well, yeah. that's a good idea. You know, we could look at all we could save and... and market. Market. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Oh, got good used livers right here. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We want a good one. Livers are up. Livers are up. All I, all I want to leave you with in the midst of all this that we're going to work ourselves through... <laughs> This one, um, I can't remember his first name, but his last name was Glazerton. 
Glazerson, Glazerson. Anyway, he found all these phrases that, you know, when you see the Hebrew letters are also have a numerical value, just like Greek. Mm -hmm. Anyway, all these phrases that he went through added up to uh, 776. And if you add the five in front of it, that's what the Hebrews would do, that would be next year. Okay? So he was, he, he was just amazed at these phrases, all numbering up to the, the Hebrew year for next year. And in that, you hear the word repent. Each one of them echoes repent. It's uh, come back to me like naughty children. I mean, quit being naughty. <laughs> Don't come back naughty, you know. You know what I mean. Come like naughty children. Come back to me. <laughs> and uh, that, that phrase, just, that just blows me away. I, and on these four blood moons that we are, mm. we're coming in September to see the fourth of three blood moons that hasn't happened since, pff, whoa. I'll, I'll, if you're interested and you haven't seen that link, I'll, I'll send you Mark Biltz on the four blood moons and the significance of, of where that comes from. I think, I think these are signs that we're supposed to see. I mean, that's why we're back on, on Sabbath. Is because we're we're in we're in the rhythm of the sevens, <laughs> and it, if you're not on the Sabbath, you can't be on the rhythm of the sevens. And somehow, some way, I don't know, we're we're gonna we're gonna see things and understand things that I don't think we would necessarily understand if we were out of that rhythm. I saw a hand back here. Yeah, no, we're two yeah. minutes past, so <coughs> man, short. I was just going to say that I, I think you're right about how far we might be into the tribulation because uh, with the economy on the verge of the collapse, you got a bill right now, a national bill, I can't remember the number, that uh, they're basically, there's no religious opt-out, there's no opt-out, period, for forced uh, vaccines, vaccinations. Yeah. Okay, all this, you know, it could be for vaccinations, it could also be for the mark, but I think to get people conditioned, but you got all this stuff, the timing of it. Oh, is just, yeah. I think that what we're going to see soon is forced vaccinations. We're going to, I think, see um, the chip being, being forced on people that want government programs. Yeah. I think that's where they're going to start. So if you're a disability, if you're uh, social, I don't know about social security, but... You know, disability and and uh, what mothers, uh, um, Wick. Oh, Wick, Wick. Um, you know, you can get on some, uh, yeah, welfare program. program. Chip for chip. Then then you got to get the chip in order to continue, and then we'll have a nice sweet little reason, and most people will just ignorantly line up. Oh, that's okay. They'll probably even give you a bonus, crank the machines up, print more money. So then. Um, I think that'll be a precursor to the mark or the chip being uh, forced on all of us. Well, you're already using it. Yeah, I know. But I mean, I mean a real, I mean a, a import. Yes, I know, but when it says you can buy or sell without it, that's the system that we have right now. Right. You go to the grocery store, it's there right. already. Right. It's all so, in place waiting for something big. Yeah. Okay, last question. Our new credit cards have last question, and then we'll have a break. Do <laughs> you think it could be a barcode? Mm -hmm. Well, be, yeah. that's how your computer reads that little chip. Mm -hmm. 1,600 pages of information is going to be held in that little thing, no bigger than a piece of, no, big, no bigger than a grain of rice. 1,600 pages of information. There's some kind of chip in the credit card. Yeah, and it reads it like computers do, which is barcodes. Okay, let's. Let's close. Let's close with our benediction, and then this is an announcement. Before we do that, we'll take a 15-minute break, and then we'll come back over here for for prayer. You know, we we had started doing this when we were still into our Sunday routine, and then we would come back Sunday evening 
and we would pray for the persecuted church. Since we've been doing this on Saturdays, it's we lost our rhythm. So we're going to take a break. I don't know if there's snack, whatever you can visit. And if you want to, you can come back in here and we'll have a session of prayer. Probably, I don't know, 30 minutes. Gets pretty exciting once in a while. <laughs> so I'm calling it target practice. Because we pray for the persecuted church. But we put into effect, if the Lord leads us to do that, we put into effect uh, Ephesians chapter 6. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers. And I realized, I don't really do that. But Paul is saying that we can, and that through Jesus Christ we have the authority to wrestle with demonic presences over certain regions of the earth. Principalities and powers in high places. That's not talking about people that are judges or whatever. So, we take authority over a demonic presence and we name those like, like over in Iran and Iraq and we did that one week and I was watching the news that week and I don't know if you saw this story but you know, they're beheading these people and putting their heads on the fences and you know, all this stuff and here, you know, here's these little flies flying around, you know, all this dead meat. <laughs> but guess what those flies did? They bite. And it showed the story of these Muslims who have these open sores all over them because they were being bitten by these flies. Ah, I'm going, thank you, Jesus. That was so cool. Okay, we're going to do that again. There you go. It was amazing. So anyway, let's stand. Let's stand. the plagues of Egypt, right? Yeah. That's right. Well, we ended up with quite a few. I, I, we only had like six here, like five o'clock. <laughs> okay. Here we go. To him who sits on the throne and unto the land. To him who sits on the throne and unto the land. Lord. 